Okay. Hi folks, it's good to be with you. I've got Mike here, Brother Mike. Hi. Brother Mike, I just want to read this and I want your, your thoughts on these verses. We're going to talk about expository preaching and the need for expository preaching. We're outside of the Church of England Church and what we hope to do in this video, we hope that the ministers of the Church of England, parishioners in the Church of England, bishops in the Church of England, and in the evangelical churches would pass this video around on multimedia sites to inspire the church to return back to a deeper understanding and obedience to the word of God. So let's just read this passage and let's see what brother Mike says about this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are God, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of it, from such turn away. For of this sort are they who creep into the houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away in various lusts, even learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 now. Now as James and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. But thou fully know my doctrine, manner of life and purpose, faith, long-suffering, love and patience, persecution and afflictions which come unto me at Antioch, Iconium, Listeria, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord deliver me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall uh, suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of knowing, of whom hast thou learned them. And as a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is being given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I've, I've got a few more verses in a minute I'll read, but what, what are your thoughts about what I've just read, Mike? I think it sums up the times. Get, 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 get I think that verse, I think that passage today sums up the times we're in today. And I think it sums up all times um, from the beginning. Of time, from the beginning when the scripture was revealed up until now, that passage is true in any generation. Because in any generation you're going to have men who are boasters, lovers of money, yeah, love as a yeah, pleasure yeah. rather than love to God, insolent, proud, and we see that today. We see people who have just got no fear of God at all, they've Amen. got no respect Amen. for the parents. Amen. Amen. And when we preach the gospel, we see this manifest with people who are very arrogant and very angry, and you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Bible doesn't go down well with these people, and God's word is true. Just by their actions, we can see that. So, like it says, all Scripture is God breathed. And it's profitable and, and, it, and it never returns void and we see it. God's word is just yeah. perfect, flawless and yeah, speaks well, volumes. We, we, need the, we need the scriptures back in church and back in society, the Holy Bible. And that passage describes that society and the church apostatizing from the word of God. I was listening to the BBC uh, today about uh, gang violence in London. And one of the gang members who's changed and now reformed himself said that one of the big issues of why people are going into gangs is the breakdown of the family. That fathers don't know what, how to be fathers anymore and there's, a, there's no love in the family. And the women are trying to do all the work to raise a family and they're finding it difficult. But the Bible gives you a pattern of what family life is like. But the crisis in our nation at the present time is because the national church i.e. the church of england is not fulfilling her responsibility and her responsibility is to be a light to the nation and that light comes from nothing but the word of god 
And it's really important at this present hour that the Church of England and the mainline denominations, not just in this country but around the world, and the Evangelical churches and Pentecostal churches, it's absolutely central and important that we get back to the Bible, the Word of God. Because this is our nourishment as church, this is our nourishment as a nation, this is our nourishment for our own souls, it's the pure Word of God. And many today are being deceived. Many today, Mike, when we go into Manchester, how many Jehovah's Witness teams can you count in Manchester? Well, I'd say six, maybe more. They're all living all over the show, yeah. So there's teams of Jehovah's Witnesses pushing their cult teaching in Manchester. Many, many teams. When we go in Manchester, are there any other groups that are pushing their false teaching? Yes, uh, Islam. We have the Muslim tent in Manchester. Uh, I think we have the Hebrew Israelites. Now and again we see them. There's another, I don't know if you can't say too much about them, but I've seen them, the big banner one. You know, the, yeah, there's another group there. There's another yeah. group there, I'm not, so the, I'm not the, sure about that. There's a lot of groups in Manchester that are pushing false teaching, but this is mimicked throughout the country. When we go to Hyde Park, it's principally the Muslims that are pushing their teaching. Yeah. And the church is not out in force in Hyde Park. We had Easter, and we had churches come out singing, praising and witnessing, and it was wonderful. But the church needs to recover its missionary mind, its spiritual mind, and it needs to get back to the Bible. Now, I want to just read another passage here. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, it says, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be diligent in season and out of season, reprove rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, uh, after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having each, uh, itching ears. The greatest need of the hour is for men in the church who can preach the word of God and teach the word of God so that people are getting grounded in this word so that they can use the gifts. You were talking the other day about the spiritual gifts. Yeah. Well, people can't use those gifts unless they're grounded in the word of God. The church can't be using... Uh, the, the church needs to be solid in the Bible. And it's the responsibility of the pastors and the elders to teach the pure word of God. Now, the, one of the best ways you can do it is what is called expository preaching. In Westminster Chapel, in 1945, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones came to Westminster Chapel and he preached verse by verse, chapter by chapter, through the Bible. And when the church gets back to expository preaching, where the ministers stop talking about themselves, stop talking about the prosperity gospel, stop trying to entertain people, when the ministers start to take the Bible seriously and do expository preaching and preach systematically through the Bible, the church will come alive in revival, fire, because the church will be biblical in all that it does. Have you any thoughts about that, Mike? That's, that's spot on, that, mate. That's really spot on, yeah. We have to get back to the Word of God. We can't have a walked down gospel. We can't have a gospel that tickles ears and keeps people uncomfortable in seats. The you know, there is some uncomfortable doctrines in the Bible and if a church congregation is not in line then the word of God needs to be ministered, it has to be, because it says that man doesn't live on bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So if we speak in another word, we're not speaking the word of God, people are not getting saved and listening to a false doctrine. Some people may believe in the Christian world that it's okay to sing because Jesus saved them, right, they can live out of one, but no, that's you know, we have to get on solid Bible ground, otherwise we're in enemy uh, we're in the Amen. enemy territory. Amen. You know, Amen. And the devil wants to infiltrate the church, he wants to cause division in the church, he wants mm. to cause mm. division in the body of Christ. But the body of Christ should be united. And like it says in Corinthians, there's many parts, but one body. Yeah. And if yeah. one part suffers, the whole part will, will suffer yeah. as well. So it needs to be healthy and it needs to be um, grounded in the truth. Amen. Amen. So 
it's like he said when one part suffers all parts suffer and we're suffering today because the church is not being taught the bible as it should so i just want to challenge uh pastors today theological seminaries what are you doing sending your people to theological seminaries and what are the theological seminaries doing i've been to theological seminary and a lot of it is you just make clever little devils are you inspiring the preachers of a new generation are you equipping men and i say men because it says men are to do the main body of the preaching are you equipping the men to be expository preachers of the word are they coming out grounded in the word of god and teaching and preaching the word of god until that happens women boys girls whatever are not going to be equipped to do their ministry women have great ministries to do children have great women uh, ministry to do youth have great ministries to do everybody's got a ministry but until the men rise up and are taught the word of god and come and teach the word of god the church is going to be uh, sick and I, I put a challenge to theological seminaries today you're teaching philosophy you're teaching sociology you're teaching psychology you teach feminism you teach every ism going are you teaching this and are your men coming out on fire are your men coming out grounded are your men changing the next generation a solid bible preachers of the word of god you need to ask yourself as principals you need to ask yourself as lecturers in theology what are you actually achieving the reason why britain is secular the reason why america is becoming secular the reason why Europe is secular is because the theological seminaries became secular and lost the vision of raising up an army that will preach the word of God. So the theological seminaries need to reform themselves and get back to the word of God. There was a guy, there's a guy called Dr. Muller who came to Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. It was, it was riddled with liberalism. He sacked all the liberal lecturers and he got people in who would teach the Bible. That theological seminary now is a powerhouse for the gospel. That is the model that every theological seminary needs to get back to. Secondly, the local church, vicars, ministers, pastors, need to get back to preaching the word of God. And you need to start training your people in the word of God. Over to you, one last word from you. Yeah, I agree, man. That's uh, it's powerful, yeah. We need to get back to the grassroots. We have to get back to the pure word of God, otherwise we start to drift away. We can't, we can't afford to drift away. We can't afford to drift away. So I think it says in the Bible, it says, take heed of what you learned from the beginning. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't lose sight of that. So we have to keep take heed of it. We have to take what the Bible says seriously. We can't just disregard some bits and preach on this and ignore the rest. No, we have to, we have to get into it and, and really, really Equip people, equip the saints, equip the men, and, and, and stand on the word of God. Don't be scared of it. If people challenge you, so what? Challenge you, you challenge wow. them. Yeah. That's really powerful. What he's saying there is there's a lot of pick and mix. People pick the bits that they like of the Bible in the church, and then there are bits that they don't like, like hell. They don't like hell, so they leave hell out. They don't preach on hell. And it's this pick and mix mentality within the church that has weakened the church. And the church in Europe and in America. It's becoming secular day by day. And the reason why it's becoming secular is because people in the church have this pick and mix mindset where they pick what they want and leave out what they want. But it needs ministers to stand up and be bold today and say, no, we're not doing pick and mix anymore. We're not following secularism. We're not following culture. We're following the pure divine word of God from now on. And we're going to make our stand on that. And until the church makes her stand on the word of God, the secularism will still will continue to eat into the church like a cancer. Where the church will, in the end, will just become a glorified nightclub. Where everybody's just having a party and it's all great, but they've watered everything down and they don't look anything different from the world. And it's because the church failed to stand on the word of God but listen to culture, listen to their own feelings, listen to secularism, rather than listen to the pure word of God. Amen. So it's so important that you as ministers today return back to the Bible. Listen, 
I've been in ministers' fraternals where you're all clever clogs, you've all got your, your letters after your name, and you think you're smart because you've read a bit of Kant. Well, I'm telling you, you're not smart because what you have done is secularized the nation. What you have done has destroyed the church. And you need to repent. You need to repent of your cleverness. And you need to humble yourself and come back to the pure word of God. Preach the word like Calvin. Preach the word like Luther. Preach the word like the Puritans, like John Bunyan, like uh, uh, John Owen, like uh, Charles Spurgeon, like Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Start to preach the word of God with power and anointing and get that word out in the churches and the church will come alive in Pentecostal power when she returns back to the pure word of God. That's, do, that's, yeah. do you want to say the last bit or no? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's spot on that. Brilliant. Um, I can all I can say is amen to that. That's amazing. Yeah. We just need to get back to the word of God and stand on the word of God because if we don't stand on the word of God, we're going to stand on something that ain't the word of God. It's foundational, just collapse.